What's up guys? Welcome back to World Hatstory 101. I am Lieutenant Nathaniel Flint of the Landship Scorpius. And today we're talking about the Pickle Harbor. That's right, today we're talking about a hat so iconic with the European, Prussian, German area that it is needs very little introduction. The Pickelhaber was originally designed in October 23rd, 1842 by King Frederick William IV of the Prussian Empire. It fell out of use during World War I, uh, when it was just replaced by better hats with a little bit less of a target on their heads, uh, as well as offered more protection from the weapons that were developed during that time. The hat has a hardened leather shell that was boiled with reinforced metal uh, trim. It has a metal spike at the crown that can be unscrewed and replaced with one that sometimes had a giant plume of hair, like horse hair, and that's called a trichter. It has a large ornamental front plate that usually denotes the nation or sometimes the uh, armed forces that you are a part of. In the Prussian region, it was the providence that in which you hailed. The most common designs for these plates involve a winged eagle. Uh, the winged eagle is the emblem of the Prussian Empire. The German military Pickelhaben also uh, mounted two round uh, ornate cockades behind the chin straps. We'll do pictures of that. I'm not sure if mine has it and it was attached to the sides of the helmet. Uh, the design for this helmet was believed to be copied from actually a Russian helmet design, the helmet of Yaroslav Mudry. However, it far outshines its muse by being the helmet that launched a thousand copycats in Sweden and in South America. It got very popular in many of the European, like Prussian kind of countries, um, as well as countries such as Chile and Colombia. The name derives from pickle, meaning point or pickaxe, and haba, meaning uh, basically a bonnet, um, but it's a general term used for headgear, so it's pointed headgear. It was also called the Pickelhelm in certain areas uh, because it was a helmet. It mirrors a lot of cavalry headgear designs of the era, um, and that's why many versions that you see will have that holder uh, for the plume, uh, which will have a large horsehair plume, especially for cavalrymen and cavalry officers. The use of the Pickelhaba spread rapidly in the Prussian Empire through infantrymen. Uh, the Kingdom of Bavaria was actually the last principality to adopt this headstyle for their infantry infantrymen. It replaced a helmet known as the Rappenhelm. So let's talk about the South American adoption of this helmet and how wildly popular it got in South America. Uh, the adoption of this hat in South America comes directly from uh, German and Prussian experts that were sent to the region to help train and sometimes arm a lot of these na nations in the region. This led to either the Pickelhaba itself or something that is very close or very similar being adopted by many nations in the region during this time. That includes Argentina, Bolivia, Colombia, Chile, Ecuador, uh, Mexico, Peru, and Venezuela. The Russian version of this helmet initially used horsehair plumes that were fitted to the spike, uh, but after a while this was discarded in favor of other designs. The Russian version of the helmet, the, the spike actually looks like a grenade of the time, which is a cool, unique design for Russian versions. During the Crimean War, uh, this was actually a very popular Russian helmet for infantrymen and grenadiers that, uh, that they sent to that war. However, uh, for the 
Russians, this hat was very quickly replaced with the Forager cap. The helmet was slowly replaced through other areas as well, and soon only became used in ceremonial roles. Until eventually the hat was replaced famously with the Budinovka. This happened around 1919, and it was uh, a replacement by the Red Army. But that is for a different video. All metal versions of the Pickelhaba were worn by the cuirassiers, as well as in officers' portraits of the time. These versions got the nickname the Lobster Tail Helmet, due to the articulated metal neck protection that it had designed into it. A cover for the hat was designed for use in battle to help protect uh, the hat from mud and, and normal wear and tear. It was designed in about 1892. The problem is, is by the time World War I came along, uh, this hat was a staple of the Prussian military of that whole region, and when Germany unified, of course, it became a symbol of Germany. Uh, the thing is, is that it's a little bit impractical. They needed to cut costs for wartime, they needed to make hats that were more protective and less visible for trench warfare and all the new weapons that were coming out at the time. So the helmet became reduced, more streamlined, cheaper, and eventually just became useless, didn't offer much protection, and it was very visible on the battlefield uh, with the nice big spike that I had. Also, as the war raged on, Germany's leather stockpiles were drastically reduced and became more and more expensive and more and more in high demand. The leather helmets offered little protection against shrapnel. In the end, the German military played around with a lot of steel metal designed that could be uh, mechanically produced quicker and much cheaper. And uh, they had a hard time doing that with the Pickelhaube design. In 1916, the helmet was replaced with another iconic helmet, the Stahlhelm. It offered greater protection, it was made of steel, and it was much easier to mass produce, and it was cheap to outfit an entire army with. The Pickelhaube was soon reduced to only a ceremonial role, and even then it's become rarer and rarer as time has gone on. With the collapse of the German Empire in 1918, the Pickelhaube was actually removed from the official German uniform altogether. Even their police force that also used the Pickelhaube started adapting the, the Jaeger Shako hat. Current day, the Pickelhaube is still used around the world. Again, mostly in those ceremonial roles, but it does have a place in many nations around the world. You can find the hat in nations such as Portugal, in Thailand, Chile, Colombia, Venezuela, and Ecuador. The Romanian Gendarmerie actually maintain a mounted detachment who still uh, have the plumed Piccolaba as part of their ceremonial uniform. And I don't think that it can even be argued that this helmet is a icon and symbol of the once great German Imperial Army, as well as the Prussian uh, Empire before it, as well as the Austro-Hungarian, like the whole region, it is a symbol. So much so, it was iconic, it was a must-see in, uh, in uh, war propaganda, especially in World War I. It was a coveted item of a souvenir during wartime, including in World War I, even as they got more and more rare. Um, Allied soldiers would risk it all just to have one to bring home. They were just such an icon of the massive mechanized enemy that they were fighting against. In fact, real antique versions of these helmets are coveted. They are so expensive for collectors and war reenactors worldwide. In the lead up to the 2006 FIFA tournament in Germany, there was even a cheap version of the Pickelhaube made for fans that were colored as the German flag. It was black, red, and gold, and they uh, sold and gave them out to fans for the, the tournament, and they are also a coveted collector's item to some people. I also want like a quick little like picture of this like tactical Pickelhaube, only because I found it in my research and I can't find much information on it or where to buy it, but like Look at that, like that's just awesome. It's just cool. And with that, that's really all there is to say about the Piccolaba. 
It is an amazingly iconic hat, and it's not just for Germany or Europe. It has dense history in South America and some Asian countries as well. Um, this hat is truly worldwide, and let's face it, it is iconic. You can actually, you can 100% tell this hat from a distance. There's no question that you are wearing a Piccolaba. Uh, that being said, you can buy these. They're getting actually a little bit more popular online in recent years than they have been. Um, I would just be careful. I got mine from Amazon. Uh, I needed it for the Iron Harvest videos, but also I, I needed it for World Hat 3 101. And mine is a little janky. Uh, it was a little bit under $100, I think, or around $100. Um, it, it's not that much more money to get one that's a little bit higher cost. Like my plate is a little off centered. It's a, it feels a little bit, but for cosplay purposes and stuff, it's it's a good helmet to have. It'll set apart your steampunk character pretty well. So it's a lot easier to get your hands on one uh, if you need it for a gift idea or something. Uh, go ahead and check it out. It's it's worth a look if you end up loving it or if you're a collector. And with that. What else is there to say? I'm afraid that's going to be the end of the episode. Thank you so much for joining me. I am so excited for next uh, the next World History episode to come out. Uh, so excited. It's our first collab on the channel. So if you don't want to miss it, subscribe to World History for all your World History 101 needs as well as other hat related historical videos. If you like this video, please share it and like it. Um, down below. It helps us find our audience here on YouTube. Also check out our other World History 101 videos. On the channel we only have a few but that's because this channel just for World History is semi new. We also have a bunch of videos over at my old channel. You should be able to find those on a playlist on the channel itself and go check them out. We've covered many hats at this point. This is episode 15 of the World History 101. And with that, there's really not much else to say. What did I miss? There's a lot of uh, uh, Prussian and World War I uh, fans and uh, people who absolutely love this hat. What did I miss? What didn't I go into? How was my pronunciation? Uh, let me know down in the comments below. I'm used to getting some little tidbits here and there. Uh, and definitely uh, give me your sources if you can. That would also be great. You might make it into another video in the future. Future. And with that, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you guys in the next World Hats 3 101.